This is a life of a teacher with autism and ADHD. This is the life of a teacher in a busy urban school district. And um, yeah, please don't anybody say, oh, you're a teacher, that's so cute. Teaching about the ancient Greeks, it's not cute. It's hard. It's work. So I'm on my lunch break right now, and uh, just before I let the students go out, it was complete chaos in this room because the art teacher was here today, and the room was really loud, and he was dealing with it because he was not the classroom teacher, so he has a different level of patience than I do. But at some point during the lesson, I had just gotten tired enough of all the noise, and luckily I brought my noise-canceling headphones with me, so I, I put them on so I could have some peace and quiet because while he was teaching art, I was preparing lessons for tomorrow. And I just wanna show you what the state of second grade education is like right now. Um, so you'll get a view of what it's like for me as a teacher. And then once you put that together, you'll be able to figure out what it's like for second graders. So just hold on a second as I switch gears here. Okay, so here you're looking at the planning materials that I have right now. I'm about to teach a unit on ancient Greece to second graders. I don't know why. So I need to have maps. I need to have this flip book that has maps and then all of the pictures in it. And I'm supposed to hold this flip book up. I'm, I'm holding it in my hand right now. So like this is this floppy flip book. I'm supposed to hold this up while I have this book in my lap reading the content to them and I'm supposed to be flipping the pages of this flip book that has the story cards in it. Um, we have a Promethean board but we're not allowed to show the images on the Promethean board. So this is the content related book I have to teach from. This is the book I have to use to teach my English language learners from. So I have to plan the lessons from this book. I have to plan out the lessons from this book. Um, this book is from the prior unit that we taught, but we have to access something from this book in order to teach the lesson in this book. And then that doesn't even include this flip chart over here, floppy flip chart that I have to hold up over my head while I'm teaching as it flops around. So I need to access something from there. And then this book has the lessons like the skills and grammar and um, writing lessons in it. So all of this stuff um, I have to have prepared for tomorrow. That doesn't include the charts that I have to make. There's a chart there and a chart that I made I have somewhere else I think Oh, this one is folded that I have to use for tomorrow. This chart was one I had to make for today, and those two charts were charts that I had to make for yesterday. So um, I am just beat up tired. Like, teaching never used to be like this. I used to be able to sit in a rocking chair and read student Charlotte's Web and ask some questions about the story and pull out interesting vocabulary words. And then we'd have time to do a fun arts and crafts activity so we could connect the content to their own learning and experience. There's no time for stuff like that anymore. In the seven weeks that, since the school year started, um, we're still on like chapter five of Charlotte's Web and in years past, I was done with it by now. That's because there's no time. There's no time to teach an art lesson. There's no time to play a game with them. There's no time for them to do fun cut and paste activities. There's no time for them to go to a listening center. I remember when I was in second grade, my favorite time of the day was to go to the listening center where there was this like big box that had like, it was like an audio center that had headphones attached to it and you would put on the big bulky headphones with a big cable cord and plug it in to something and then there was this really colorful shiny box and in in the box there were different leveled cards and you would pull out a card and then put in the corresponding cassette tape <laughs> into the listening center and it would read you a story and then somehow you would answer questions I don't remember that part but that was my favorite part of the day 
It was so quiet and lovely and wonderful. I don't know if you could see at my students' desks, they have books and headphones and computers. And like, although that's how the world is right now, it's so not appropriate for seven-year-olds. So this is why I need to be done with this in four years, because I just, I don't, it's not that I'm not, it's not merely that I'm not enjoying the work anymore. It's not merely that I'm neurodivergent and that this is an environment that's like toxic to my brain at this point. It's that I don't agree with what I'm doing anymore. I just don't agree with it. I, this content is beyond unreasonable to be teaching kids. Sure, I can read them a, a realistic fiction story about the ancient Greeks and we can do a, an art project about the, you know, other ancient civilizations and that's their introduction. But like the vocabulary words, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I guess this is a rant today. What really sucks is that like, I am tied into this for four years. I, I can't leave. <laughs> I live in a place where it's the cost of living is high and I can't just pick up and leave. I mean, we, our lives are here. And um, um, I have four more years until I get that health benefit and I need that. Um, just sucks. This is so overwhelming. So I, I forgot where I even started here, but um, when I got back in from taking the students out to lunch, I just put my head in my hands at my desk and I cried a bit because like my nervous system is on overload. Um, we're having a review team come to our school tomorrow because our school where we teach at is a priority school, meaning that the test scores haven't um, improved in a certain number of years. So people will be walking through the classrooms and evaluating the teaching that's happening. I've been teaching for 26 friggin' years already. Why in the world do you need to evaluate me? Like, I know what I'm doing. I know what to do. Plus, they're evaluating us this year when they've given us this new language arts curriculum. So none of the teachers at our school, whether we're veteran teachers like me or newer teachers, none of us know the curriculum well enough, yet they're sending official people in to evaluate, like to babysit us, and then they're going to write up a review and we're going to have to review it, and then we're going to be held to even higher standards, higher unreasonable standards. So um, it just needs to stop. These are little kids, let them be kids. Like by the time these kids get to middle school, they're gonna be burnt out. I just don't understand. Anyway, I just needed to share with you and let you see what I'm up to during my day when I'm not walking in the park or laying in my bed completely exhausted from my day. This is a life of a teacher. This is a life of a teacher with autism and ADHD. This is the life of a teacher in a busy urban school district. And um, yeah, please don't anybody say, oh, you're a teacher. That's so cute. Teaching about the ancient Greeks. It's not cute. It's hard. It's work. Don't tell me my job is cute. I don't accept that. Thanks. We'll talk again soon.